turned on the news and there it was, you know, four Americans had been dead and two were unidentified. And I'm like, you know, he hasn't called me. I tried texting him, I tried calling him, you know, began to, to cry and, and I just hit my knees and, and prayed. In past experience, if I start panicking right away, then I just get myself worked up. So I just tried to not worry about it. And I thought, well, I'll hear from him in the morning or the next evening. There was a ticker on the bottom of whatever news channel it was, and it said something to the effect that there was an attack on the annex in Benghazi. And my heart dropped, and I'm like, gosh, how am I going to tell the kids? And that was my first reaction. Let me take you to when the bigger convoy arrives. Yeah, yeah. They finally get there. It's like 50 cars. Yeah. There's technicals, which are the big mounted machine guns. Yeah, it, was me. it was me. It was a mean convoy. Remember the first vehicle coming in? I had my gun on him. I had eyes on. Well, I mean, right at, right at his head. And I just reached my hand off the, with my off hand. And I went like this. And he reached out, right, reached out the car and did like and big, a big smile. And, one thing that we've learned on these jobs is it, it, you have to know how to read people. But is there a part of you guys that looked at that convoy and said, well, where, where, where was that? <laughs> yeah. Where, where was that before? Yes, I, mean, I did. I'm like, where the, where the hell were these guys? Where, where were they? <clears throat> Hours ago. Exactly. You, you get everybody mounted up. Uh, you drive them to the airport in this massive convoy, but yeah. still probably worried about attacks on the way. Sure. You there get there, and there's another... <laughs> Confrontation between the militias, yeah, our militia, and then whoever militia was controlling the airport, and uh, you know we were the bigger militia, so we got we got through. You have a smaller airplane; it's not exactly yeah. big for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, load you guys up, or you walk on. They started to pull me off, and I'm like, I walked into Benghazi. I'm going to walk out of here, and uh, I get up, um, slide to the edge, and stand up. You know, there's still blood dripping down my arm, and the. Uh, because it was a private jet, there was a flight attendant, and um, her eyes just get as big as saucer plates, and she's laying towels down yeah. because she's worried about her boss's airplane <laughs> getting messed up. And then they bring in Dave, and he was in and out of consciousness throughout the flight, and somewhere in between that, um, somebody's clearing their gun, their the, pistol, the local, in the plane. Yeah, in the yeah. plane and a round goes off <laughs> um, and the pilot is I'm not gonna he wasn't gonna take off till they could confirm that whether or not the fuselage had been breached but they figured it out it had lodged against one of the seat posts mm. and didn't penetrate anything Dave Ubin he was bleeding out if there was another delay he probably wouldn't have made it because he was down to about as much blood as a person could lose before they die. You're taking off in the plane. The rest of you guys yep. are, are going to wait for the next plane. Yes. Uh, with the, the bodies and yes. then eventually the body of Ambassador Stevens. Yes. I didn't answer it on the first ring. It rang a couple times because I wasn't sure who it was going to be. <laughs> if it was going to be him or if it was going to be some you know, representative informing me of what had happened. I took a deep breath and I listened and I just said, okay, and I love you. And I probably didn't sleep much that night. It was really brief. He just said, I'm okay, everything is okay. And I just, and click, he hung up. So it was super quick. <laughs> Finally, it was about five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, a nurse from Lundstall had called and said that he had arrived there, and so I was just like, just like I could breathe. And just, just thank God. Did you do it all over again? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. I'd be there. That's just the way we are. You, I mean, you run. We run to it. We're not running away from it. How often do you get back? to this 13 hours. Do you think about it a lot? Every day you think about it. 
They're in a day that you don't. I mean, I'm reminded of it every time I go to grab something. Um, Here's your hand. Yeah, because I still don't have full use of it. Never, probably never will have full use of it. I mean, but, so it is a reminder, but it's, it reminds me of the honor of, the, of fighting with guys like Tig and Tonto and Roan and Bub and Jack and DB. Um, very few times in your life will you get to uh, form a bond like this, and most of the time it's done in situations that suck. And, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it up. When you see all of the back and forth that has happened over the past roughly two yeah. years, what do you think about all the political you, battle? You, you and can't, that sort of you thing? can't get it wrapped up in because we're, we're, we're not politicians. You know, we're contracts. We're soldiers. We were Marines, Rangers. We still are. You know, we'll always be. So leave that to the politicians. I can't speak for why a politician did this or why a politician did that. All I can speak for is what we went through that night and what happened. But if I gave you that 30 minutes back and I gave you some air power, would Ambassador Stevens and Sean Smith be alive today? Yes. To me, if without the delay, they would still be alive. My gut is yes. You in on that? I would strongly believe if we'd have left immediately, they'd still be alive today. I think there's a lot of things could have been different. Um, I mean, air power, if we had some air support, if they'd have sent somebody in. The Spectre, in my opinion, can see heat signatures. And, you know... They would be able to see the mortar team They would be able to see the mortar team set. Which means that Roan and Bub would be alive. Would it have improved our chances? Oh, heck yeah.